that actual ministry is not seen today. It is not like the priesthood of old. But this man has a higher ministry. It's an excellent ministry. It's a higher ministry. And we see about that ministry in Isaiah chapter 42. Now turn with me uh, to a few more scriptures. Turn with me to 1 John chapter 4. Thank you, Lord. Here is our love made perfect that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. Because as he is, so are we in this world. 17. Verse 17. Praise God. As he is, so are we in this world. What is your Bible saying? Please read. Anybody got some other translation? In this union and communion with him, love is brought to completion and attains perfection with us, that we may have confidence for the day of judgment. Yeah. As he is, so are we in this world. What translation is that? Amplified. Yeah. Anybody's got an IV? Please. For because in this world we are like him. Yeah, NKJV. Somebody has got new King James Version. There is no fear of love, but perfect love casts the fear. Because fear involves, but he who fears does not be made perfect in love. No, verse 17. Love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness in the day of it. Because as he is, so are we in this world. Yeah, I, I see that that has got much more to minister to us. It says here, as he is, so are we in this world. As he is, so are we in this world. It does not say as he was. Does it say? No. But it says as he is, so are we in this world. As he is. As he is, so are we in this world. Now we will come to that. A little later, but I just want to give this for us to keep upon our heart. The scripture doesn't say, as he was, so are we in this world. I'm not denying that fact. But the scripture says here, as he is, so are we in this world. And therefore we have boldness on the day of judgment. Praise God. Now, you know, we, we remember that you know, last time when we gathered together, the Lord ministered to us about the seventh month of the Lord. I just want to brush up one or two things and then we will go on to further understanding of this. Yeah. We all know the three feasts of Israel. No, I think we all know so. Maybe we don't have to uh, write it or picture it here. We all know that there are three feasts for Israel. The Passover, the Pentecost, and the Feast of Tabernacles. We all know that the Feast of Tabernacles in the seventh month. And we know the Feast of Tabernacles begins with the blowing of the trumpets. And we know that you know, as we have heard the last time, the Lord was reminding to us about the blowing of the trumpet that is taking place in fulfillment of God's word in these days. 
Yeah, and the Lord wants us to remind ourselves and know that we are also living in the day of God's atonement. The day of atonement which is on the 10th day of the 7th month. And the 10th day of the 7th month, we have seen it, it's not new to us. We have seen that the whole nation turns towards the Lord in a new repentance. The whole nation of Israel, it is not only the priests, but all the people. The whole nation, Israel as a nation, turns to the Lord in humility and in repentance on the Day of Atonement. And remember, as we have seen before, without the Day of Repentance, without the Day of Atonement, there is no fulfillment of the Feast of Tabernacles. There is no fullness of Tabernacles without the Day of Cleansing, without the Day of Repentance. Because for the children of Israel, they had their own way, and their way was far away from the way of the Lord. As we read in the book of Isaiah chapter 55, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are my ways your ways. Their ways have been far different from the ways of God. And therefore once in a year, God reminded them about that they need to turn to God. They need to turn from their ways. They need to repent from their own thinking and their own ways and turn towards the Lord. And I'm sure that, you know, we have come. Now, I think we just, uh, we, we just consider the children of Israel. That the children of Israel gathered like this. With one desire on the Day of Atonement. And that is, they want to repent. And I believe that God too has gathered us in these days. That we may repent. Can you agree with me? There are many times we are, we are strayed from His ways. I can say that in my life. There are times that we have taken for granted His thoughts. You know, but they were our thoughts. We have moved away from that ministry, that calling, that word He has ministered to us. And I believe the Lord wants us to bring this to our heart before we go further that God is calling us to a place of repentance. God is calling us to a place of coming back to His ways. Now this Israel had to do as a nation. And I believe that the church is a nation. Do you agree with me? Yes. Yeah, the Bible says the kingdom of God therefore shall be taken from a nation and shall be given to another nation which shall bring forth the fruit. And what is that nation? The church, the people of God. You and I, we are that nation. And I believe in this day of atonement, God wants us to come in to His tabernacle, to His house, to His gathering with a true penitent, repentant heart to be changed by the Lord. The day of atonement is again a day of preparation. A preparation that is needed for the fulfillment of the fullness. Without this preparation, there can be no fullness. There can be no maturing. There can be no bringing forth of the fruit. So what I am trying to say, or what the Lord is trying to say to us is, that, you know, without, without really paying a price, Without really giving out something, there is nothing that we are going to receive in these days. Without a dying, there is not going to be a new life. Without some giving away, there can be no receiving from His presence this morning and in these days. The Lord wants us to very much be aware of this. Without a losing there can be no gaining in our coming together in these meetings. And the Lord therefore wants us to sit down and be in these days with this attitude of losing, with an attitude of giving away, with an attitude of dying. Yeah, we were all encouraged when the Lord said that He will do a new thing. And I'm sure that newness will only come forth 
out of a deadness that you and I would bring before God in these days. If we are able to see that deadness, we are able to see that death, we are able to acknowledge before God that barrenness which we have seen and cry out to Him. And I believe that there is going to be a fruitfulness, a bringing forth, a change, a fruitfulness. Now I know that we, we all feel, yes, we have been fruitful. We all may feel that we have been successful. But I want to say to you one thing, we have not been successful. We have not been fruitful as we see that we should be. And therefore, I believe that the Lord is calling us to a place that we would bring this, this deadness, this barrenness of our life. Bring to the Lord and say, Lord, that we have not been able to bring forth the way you have desired and looked for. And when we will turn to Him with such a heart, when we are willing to sell out and give away, that we may receive and we may buy. That, that we may come to the Lord with seriousness, even as He is serious with us. Many a time we are not serious with Him, but we know that He is always serious with us. He is always serious with us. And we need to be serious with Him. Now when we look around the church world today, there are, there are so many things going on. And there is no seriousness. There is no lordship of the Lord. Neither the Lord is enthroned in all that they do. And so, beloved people of God, God is calling us to this place of the Day of Atonement. A day that we will turn to the Lord. A day that we will desire for His cleansing and purification and forgiveness. Praise God. As we read again the book of Hebrews, we see something there. We see something about this great and wonderful ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ. Somebody please read verse 1 and 2. Hebrews chapter 8. Now of the things which we have spoken, this is the sum. Yeah. We have such an high priest who yeah. is set on the right hand of the throne of the majesty in the heavens. Yeah. A minister of the sanctuary and of the true tabernacle yeah. which the Lord pitched Hallelujah. not man. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. So we see that our Lord is seated in a throne. We see that our Lord Jesus Christ is seated in a throne. Praise God. This is one thing the Lord wants us to see. He is seated in a throne and what is He doing there? So we see the Lord Jesus Christ as one who is seated in a throne with a ministry. Yes? Huh? Praise God. We see Jesus. How do we see Him? We see Him as who is seated in the throne with a ministry. A man in the throne with a ministry. Praise God. For many people, Jesus Christ is dead. He is risen and He is gone. It doesn't matter to them what He is today. But unless we know what He is, you cannot be what He is. As He is, so are we in this world. Praise God. So we see that the Lord Jesus Christ is there in the throne with a ministry. You know, when you take the tabernacle, it's very interesting as you begin to meditate and ponder over the tabernacle and the picture of the Lord Jesus Christ. When you take the tabernacle, when you take the tabernacle, we know the outer court, we know this is the holy place, and this is the most holy place. 
And they see that in the tabernacle there are these three realms. And I would like to put it in a different way today. God lives in a three-room house. <laughs> God lives in a three-room house. Three-room house. And we see it's something that, you know, really enlightens us when we begin to look at. And we see that this third room here is his living room. The third room there, that is his living room. Where is the Lord living? In the place the cloud was always there, yes? Above the mercy seat and between the cherubim, that was filled with a cloud of his glory, his presence, his Shekinah. And Moses often went in and met with this cloud, and he walked out of this cloud, he went into this cloud, he walked out of that cloud very often, but not Aaron. Aaron could go there only once. Praise God. So we see that the third room is the living room. The Lord dwells there. That was the place of His presence. Hallelujah. So we see that the Lord is dwelling in a three-room house. And the third room is his living room. Praise God. And we know in the tabernacle, if you take, Jesus said, I am the way. And he said, I am the truth. And what did he say? I am the life. The third room is a living room because that is where life is. Praise God. Jesus Christ said, I am the way. I am the truth. And I am the life. This talks about a progressive uh, life in the Lord. That's a living room. A third realm. Praise God. You know, when we read the epistles of Paul, there is another thing that we can see. Paul uses always three words. What are they? Hope. Huh? Faith, faith, hope, and charity. Faith, hope, faith, hope, love. In other words, the third room is the love room. That is a place of intimacy and relationship. Hallelujah. Praise God. And what else do we see? We see that in the third room or the living room, there is only one furniture. Yes? Praise God. In the living room of God, there is only one furniture. And what is that furniture? The Ark of the Covenant. What is that on the top of it? Mercy seat. That's the furniture there. The Ark of the Covenant with the mercy seat. Praise God. Mercy seat. The only furniture there is the mercy seat. The mercy seat is the love seat. It is actually a judgment seat. But in His mercy and love, He has turned that seat into a mercy seat and you know what we read in the book of revelation even as i overcame and sat down in my father's throne overcome let us turn to that scripture book of revelation chapter 3 and verse 21 revelation chapter 3 and verse 21 to him that overcometh will i grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame and sat down with my father in his throne. Praise God. So where is the Lord calling you to sit down? He says, overcome even as I overcame and sit down in my throne. Praise God. So the Lord 
is calling us to this higher ministry, beloved. The Lord is calling us to this higher ministry in this third realm. You understand what I'm saying? The Lord is calling us to this excellent ministry. A ministry which is done without any prejudice. A ministry which, in which there is no place for human idea. A ministry in which there is no place for human psychology. A ministry where the wisdom of man has got nothing to contribute. As we see the Apostle Paul saying, We have not come to you in the wisdom of man, not in the might and the strength of man, but we have come unto you in the demonstration of the Spirit of God. Praise, Praise God. God. Beloved, in these days God is calling us to this ministry, into this ministry, a more excellent ministry which the Lord is performing today. And as He is, so are we in this present world. Hallelujah. God is calling us to this ministry. Beloved, we, we, God wants to remind us today that your ministry, that your calling is not like the calling which we see today in the world. Today there are many people who call that themselves to be ministers, who say that they are doing ministry. They're